looking today at reciprocal models. So a reciprocal model is simply a practical situation um, where the graph forms the shape of a hyperbola. So um, we're still using our equation y equals k over x, which if you remember makes the graph of a hyperbola. Right. Um, it has the two symmetrical branches in the first and third quadrants um, and it has asymptotes at the y-axis and the x-axis. So remember that means that the graph never ever crosses either of the axes. Okay. So there'll be a few different situations where we are able to model a reciprocal function um, but it's not always going to look like our classic hyperbola y equals k over x or y equals 1 over x. Um, so we need to think about the situation in which it's being used. So if we have a look at our first example where we're looking at the time taken um, in hours for a road trip at speed s in kilometres per hour given by the reciprocal function t equals 2000 over S. Now it's really important to remember this is speed and our t is time. So what we notice when we're going to construct a table of values, firstly we have to work out which is in the position of the x and which is in the position of the y. Um, remember our reciprocal function takes the form y equals k over x. So if we compare, um, our s is in the same position as the x. So the s is in our top row of our table of values and the t is in the bottom row of our table of values. Now, normally we would take um, start with values surrounding the origin just to give us a pattern of what the graph is going to look like. But this is a practical situation. We're looking at speed and time. So for a start, we're not going to have any negative values because we can't have a negative speed and we can't have a negative time. So we're talking about speed in terms of a car traveling. Using values of S like 1, 2, 3, etc. isn't particularly realistic. Okay, so I'm going to use S values of my the normal speed limits that we would see. So S is 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. I was hoping to fit 110 on there, but I'm a little bit messy. Okay, so then it's just a matter of inputting um, our S values into our uh, function, right? So 2000 over 50 gives us 4. So in in practical terms, that means that traveling at a speed of 50 kilometers per hour, this particular road trip will take us four hours. Okay, traveling at a speed of 60, so 2000 over 60 gives us 33 and a third. So I'm just going to um, take that to one decimal place. It is an approximation, yes, but of course it's going to be an approximation once we graph the curve anyway. Um, 2,000 over 70 becomes 28.6, over 80 is 25, 90 is 22.2, and 100 is a nice round 20. Okay, so there are values that we're going to use to be able to then draw the graph. Okay, as you can see, some aren't ideal values, but we have enough detail in there to be able to draw a, get a decent idea of what the graph will look like. Okay, so now we want to graph our function. So we only need one quadrant because we're only looking at the positive values, aren't we? All right, so I'm going to have S down the bottom. I probably went a bit low with that. Yes. S down the bottom and T up the side. My S values, look, just to get a better idea of the graph, I'm going to start at 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, etc. 20, 40, 
60, 80, 100, 120. Okay, and my T values, I'm going to use, again, I'm going to go up in increments of 20 just to keep it even. 20, 40, 60, 80. Of course, when you're doing this, it will be on graph paper, so your increments will be evenly spaced. All right, so the values that we had from our table of values, we had at a speed of 50 kilometers per hour, it took us 40 minutes, so that's going to go there. At a speed of 80, it was 25, which will be about there. And at a speed of 100, it was 20, which is about there. So you can see it flattening out. I'm just also going to input um, 20 to give me a value over here. Um, so remember, T equals 2,000 over S. If S is 20, 2,000 over 20 gives me 100. So when I have an S value of 20, I have a T value of 100. So remember, this is in hours, a T value of 100 hours. So then we join our points, remember, with a smooth curve. There is some estimation involved, of course, because we are drawing a curve, but we know it's going to take that form because it is a reciprocal function. It's a model of a reciprocal function. Okay. Um, so then we'd be asked, how long did the road trip take at a speed of 70 kilometers? Now it's up to you. You can take this from the graph and a graph is going to be an estimation um, depending on how well you've graphed it. I don't have graph paper. Um, my increments are estimated, but if I was looking at my graph, 70 would be here. It hits the graph at approximately 30 hours okay so at s equals 70 t is approximately 30 hours and it's important to note that that's from the graph now if you want to use the equation to find that that's absolutely fine you would input your value of 70 as S. So T equals 2000 over 70, which gives you 28 hours and 34 minutes once you enter that as time in your calculator, which in terms of what we're talking about here is close enough to our approximation of 30 hours, okay? Um, and then we're asked, why is it impossible to complete the road trip in 10 hours? So what we're saying here is, why is this impossible to hit the graph here? How far up the graph would it need to go, right? It's pretty high up. So firstly, I took very specific S values, didn't I? I took S values that were representative of the speed limits in Australia. The speed limits in Australia don't go above 110 kilometers per hour. You can see just from the graph to do the road trip in 10 hours, it would you would need to be doing a speed up here. Okay? And of course, if you use your equation, it's quite straightforward. And you're going to work out what's the exact speed you would need to do. So, remember T equals 2,000 over S. If T is 10, 2,000 over S gives you 200. So your speed would need to be 200 kilometers per hour. That's why it's not possible. You, you're not allowed to go 200 kilometers per hour. Okay, um, having a look at our next example, we're talking about the cost of a person sharing pizza. Now, sorry, a cost of a group of people sharing pizza. Now, again, it's really important to think about the situation. 
the situation is money and number of people. This is, again, values where we can't have negatives. You can't have a negative number of people sharing the pizza. Very similarly to you cannot have the pizza costing a negative amount of money. So think about those things when you're answering the modelled question. Hopefully that was helpful for you.